uh, welcome to Melo Bones of Steel. My name is Zanzi Zanzi MMA in partnership with IOL Sport. Um, thank you for taking the time to join, join us, brother. How are you? Yeah, I'm good yourself, man. It's only a pleasure. All good, brother. All good. Thank you for asking, man. Um, I won't take up too much of your time. I know you're a busy guy. Um, so just let me give you a quick introduction to the fans and the fight fans out there. Um, for all the all of the uh, fans, supporters, readers from IOL, um, for those who don't know, Tomel is one of the fast rising flyweights fighters in general of Mzanzi with an incredible record of five wins and one loss, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. Um, obviously, unbeaten in the Extreme Fighting Championship, the premier MMA brand currently on the African continent. Four knockouts and one submission. Um, to to Melo, you faced your first loss early this month when you made your debut in um, one of another fast-growing promotions, the UAE Warriors. I think you put up a valiant effort, in my opinion, against the more experienced athlete and USA's Mark Lemaker, who scored a split decision win over you at uh, UA Warriors 46. Um, to Melo, just tell us, what exactly is your headspace like since you've now come back, settled in, Dust the settle. Just tell us, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, experience. It was such a learning curve. You know, um, being being undefeated. You know, it's you. You don't get used to feeling like that top pressure that I felt from Mark and being held down and the, the feeling of loss. I feel like it, it helped me grow very much as a fighter. Um, but that experience and all was was a big. Big game changer, you know, especially UAE, they have a, a proper fight week, you know, just like the UFC. So I feel like they're preparing me a lot for the UFC. Um, yeah, that fight, we took it on short notice. I learned about that fight on the 1st of January. And 19 days later, I was in UAE fighting. He was sick. Um, yeah. So a more experienced fighter. Um, the highest level of wrestling that I've ever faced. So yeah. it sucks. It sucks to lose, but um, I feel like it'll it'll only only make me better. Cool. Um, I wanted to actually ask you exactly. Yeah. I mean, first time I'm I'm learning of this. It was such a short notice fight. How exactly did that offer yeah. come about? I mean, I know you were unbeaten in the EFC. You probably are shooing now for the title so- shot soon. Um, I figured you would want to secure that belt first, or were you in the management? of the mind that, look, this is the fight game, you have to grab your opportunities when it's offered. Um, also taking the experience, uh, taking into mind the, the experience you could gain. So just explain to us exactly the process of how that fight came about. So they, just, they offered me, my management offered me a fight for UAE. And, you know, I did, I did consider, um, you know, staying in the EFC well they still obviously that um, that option of doing it but um I see that they're they're fighting for the title in March you know um Gip Walker and Zulu Boy so I doubt Gip Walker or Zulu Boy ever wins will, will be able to defend in like April or May you know they want to keep that up for, for a while maybe for three months so my mind was that you know I'm just trying to stay active you know, um, yeah, my, my eyes, would, it would be nice to get um, a shot for the EFC title. Um, but yeah, that's in the hands of the EFC. You know, they, they do the matchmaking. It would be nice, but I can't force it at the end of the day. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so can you just so so basically are you saying that you you're quite open to um anything else that's not the main priority of yours right now you're open to seeing what the uae has to offer and you're just going to take it as it comes no definitive most first definitely moment. most definitely i'm most definitely open to the uae to a title shot you know it's a it's a fight game i just want to fight as much as possible stay active it would be nice to have a box but yeah mostly stay active okay cool Thanks for that. Um, um, I think this was your own, your first fight um, abroad thus far, and you spoke now about um, the the heavy, the top heavy game. I wanted to actually this actually led to my the, my next question. Like, what was anything different you picked up fighting in Abu Dhabi in comparison to fighting in South Africa? Um, is there a much stronger focus on the ground grappling or wrestling game? I mean, it was just one fight so far that you had there, but yeah. was that like the big standout for you from from that whole trip and experience? Yeah. So. We prepared quite a bit with the, with the wrestling, obviously in a sh- very short amount of time. So if we had better time, I think it would have been uh, 
Yeah, and it was a split decision fight. also, right? Split decision, yeah. Very close. Um, in terms of the difference, I mean, it's, it's a proper fight week there. So there's media day, there's weigh-ins, and you spend a whole week in the UAE. Opposed from EFC, we don't usually spend a week. I, I usually arrive there the day before weigh-in. Hmm. So, being there the whole week puts you in a, in a whole different mindset. You know, it, it was an excellent experience. Excellent experience. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Um, tell me, and, and was this, besides another fighting, was this your first time abroad? Have you been abroad before on holiday or work or training camps at any point? First time off the continent, ever. <laughs> so, that is also new. Um, having a long flight, I remember getting there the first day and I was, I could barely even hit pads. But, uh, uh, yeah, second day I was all good, but just experiencing that, that first day of, of jet lag, even though it's only a two hour difference, it's it's something new. It was something, yeah. yeah. I thought, so, who, who all went with you? Was it Coach Mike and anybody else? Yeah, so Coach Mike was with me and then we have... Um, a teammate currently living in Dubai. Okay. I just drove an hour to Abu Dhabi, uh, Zahir, you know, and he was my second corner. Is that not bad that day? No, no, no. Okay. No, no, okay. no, Zahir. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, and tell me something. Um, it's, I know you fight, you, you base at Pride, uh, Fighting Academy, PFA. Um, did you grow up in Cape Town? Where exactly did you grow up? Um, just tell us a bit about your background, please. And how did you get into fighting? Yes. So, I was born in Victoria, but I only lived there for two years. My first year, so I can barely remember anything from it. <laughs> and then after that, I moved to Nysla for the next five years. It's a beautiful place, and eh? And beautiful place. But, <laughs> but also, I was young, so I didn't, really, I didn't really appreciate it that much. Yeah. Um, and then I moved down to Cape Town when I was seven. <laughs> so, basically, almost, uh, oh God, bless you. Thank you. Um, so basically almost my whole life I've been in Cape Town. Um, yeah, I consider myself a Cape Townian. I don't even remember Victoria. I barely remember anything about Nines now. Uh, yeah. PFA, I feel like in my opinion, best MMA gym in Cape Town. So it only made sense that I came, came to train here. Um, I was learning to martial arts. So it was in 2007. There was a karate dojo down, down the road from my gym. One of my friends pointed it out, so my dad got me signed up. I started karate. I wasn't really into the kata and all that. I like I like to fight the kumite. So I quickly made Western Province and uh, went to nationals and all that. I think I finished around fourth in nationals. Um, only did that for two years. And then we found another um, kickboxing slash MMA gym down the road to that from my karate gym. Okay. And then I, I, I entered there. All right, so it was a big adjustment with the striking and all that. Um, more, I did points karate, so there's more like flicky kicks and all that. Yeah. So adjusting to K1 was kind of tricky, but within six months, I was already fighting at, um, at FA Champs. I got the title. I got first in kickboxing and fourth, fourth, or third, no, third in Muay Thai. And yeah, so I carried that on for a couple of years. And then eventually I found Jiu Jitsu. Okay. Uh, at first, when I was, when I used to watch Jiu Jitsu at my MMA gym, I used to think, oh, what on earth are you guys doing on the ground, rolling, hugging each other? But um, yeah, I finally got into it. And I actually stopped kickboxing for about two years. And just focus on Jiu Jitsu. So I, I feel like that helped, helped my ground game quite a lot. And then 2018, I finally mixed them up. I had my first and only amateur MMA fight. And yeah, I decided I wanted to pursue this. A couple of years later, I got my pro license, and that's how the journey started. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't hear you. Uh, so, you made me mute it. 
Let me just check something quickly. Ah, oh, there, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Now I was saying, as as they say in the in the classics, the rest is history. From there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the rest is history. Okay, cool. Um, to me, I just wanted to check with you, man. I saw another Mania Mala at at um, Thai Holics, and then I saw, and I mean, obviously there could be millions of Mania Malas or thousands at least in the fight game. <laughs> and then I saw Coach um, walking out with a guy at Thai Holics, and then I asked, um, I was, I want, I think I don't know what I asked, but I wanted to know, is it was it your brother? Does your brother do? Do you have a brother? Does he do Muay, Muay Thai? Yeah, so my brother's an amateur Muay Thai fighter. Ah, so what is older man? brother? Ah, uh, he looks a bit older than you, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, older brother. He actually played a big game, uh, a big role in my fight game. Um, I remember lockdown. It was very tricky to train. Yeah. So we would literally just put our gloves on in the garden and start swinging. We used to make each other bleed, and yeah, it was crazy. So yeah, we both we both done the scratches. <laughs> uh, like to throw a, a brow to brow roller, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I got I got my fair share of beast things growing up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger, as they say, no? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Mela, um, I, yeah. I know you touched on a bit of the EFC and and your your future plans. Um, like we said, Gift Walker is currently the flyweight champ, and he will be defending it soon. I think against Zulu Boy. Um, we spoke yeah. about um. You also, as an athlete, who potentially could be fighting for the title very soon after this one, but there have also been lots of whispers of you facing another young and upcoming star, current interim bantamweight champ Terence Balelo, who also happens to be five and one right now. Um, I know a lot of people are getting excited about that kind of fight, also or that specific fight. Um, the man obviously got a last call, a, a minute, minutes notice, basically to fly up to Joburg and fight for the interim bantamweight title, also. But um, what what I've just picked up from from social media also and i mean i think it will be an incredible fight is that something that that has been on your radar also and are you aware of how many people are, are excited about the prospect of you fighting terence valero i mean that would be a big fight that would be a big fight and yeah i'm in for big fights you know the better the better experience i get the better it is for me you know he's a, he's a good fighter i'll give him his props but uh yeah i believe i'm on another level you know i believe one day I will be a UFC champion. So if that comes, it comes. If the ball comes, it comes. Whatever comes my way, I'll just fight forever, to be honest. Okay, cool. Um, and just tell us to Melo, um, in terms of you now as a as a fighter, human being, holistically, um, what is what is your dreams, desires, goals? Like you can speak about your fighting, maybe studies, um, philanthropy, I don't know, family. What 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 is your desires, dreams, goals as a human, as a being, as a fighter? As a fighter, I want to make it to the top. You know, I want to prove that I'm the best ever. You know, I want to make it to the UFC, get that UFC belt. As a martial artist, you know, I'm really passionate about teaching martial arts. So I started teaching uh, this past December, and I'm totally loving it. You know, I truly believe that, especially as a fighter, as a martial artist. You, you learn martial arts and it's your responsibility to pass that knowledge down to other people. Not a lot of people have that calling, but I really I really feel like it's it's my destiny. It's what I'm supposed to be doing, competing and teaching. So, so yeah, right now, just improving my teaching, improving my fighting, and really embracing the life as a, as a martial artist. Yeah. Okay, cool. And tell us just in terms of um, outside of the, your, your pro fighting, um, are you a trainer at PFA or do you, what, what else do you do outside of your fighting or you, do you is it, is that your, 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 your part-time job, so to say, training at yeah, PFA? Yeah, so outside of, yeah, outside of fighting, I'm a coach at uh, PFA. Okay, and yeah, what, so what do you, do you coach mixed classes. MMA or Jets or what exactly? MMA, um, if a client comes and they want Jets, I'll do Jets, you know, I, I, I earned my uh, purple belt. Uh, last year. So, oh, nice! Congrats. Yeah. So I do it all, to be honest. I do it all. Okay. And then, do you do privates at home? Also, do you everything at PFA itself? Uh, everything at, at PFA. Oh, okay. Yeah, PFA, yeah. Yeah. And then also, um, obviously, you stay in one of the most beautiful cities in the world. What do you enjoy doing in your free time? Favorite foods, hangout spots? Ah, apart from sleeping, which is number one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I, I enjoy, you know, I enjoy being out in nature, to be honest. Like, maybe going to the beach. Nothing, nothing too hectic. Um, yeah, hanging out with the friends now and then. But um, mostly recovery, if I'm being honest. Mostly okay. recovery. Yeah. And tell us, um, that, do your parents... Do you do you stay with your? If I'm sorry, if it's a bit too personal, do you stay with your parents? Do you stay? You, you all stay in one place, like together, you and your brother and your parents. You stay on your own. Yeah. So I'm currently with my parents. My brother, uh, he's not with us. He stays by himself. Okay. Yeah. So I'm still living at home at the moment. Okay. And yeah. Oh, cool. And 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 does your dad? Does he come to your fights a lot? Um, he watches all my fights. So okay. he hasn't managed to come to Joe, you know, he has work and all that. Yeah. But, but I mean, okay, uh, yeah. I mean, like yeah. when, when your brother's in fighting at Thai Olympics, does is that something? I mean, I understand Joe, you know, have to pay for flights and all that. But I mean, like, is that something? Yeah. He's, still, he's basically still a very big supporter of you, considering since when you started. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Nice. He's a big, he's a big influence. Even before I started watching, I started uh, martial arts. He used to uh, sit down and watch Muhammad Ali videos with me. Like I remember, we had, we had little. Uh, DVDs that we used to watch. We used to like explain what's happening. He told me why Muhammad Ali is one of the greatest ever and all that. So yeah, he played. He played a big role and still, still supports me to this day. Yeah. Nice, nice. And then also just tell us um what like how close are you and Coach Mike and and what does he mean to you as a coach? Um, I know it's like a family orientated gym and it's a very close to community PFA. Just uh, what are the what is the influence um Jessica and Coach Mike have on you also? They have a big, big influence. So Mike, he, his style, I feel like his fighting style is suited to my fighting style, exactly. It's very rare to find. And apart from that, you know, he helps us on the mental, the mental journey of fighting as well. He's also a mentor, you know, someone to look up to, which is very, very important. Uh, Jeff, as well, you know, also a mentor. One of the hardest working people I know, you know, and fighting um Ben Otto yeah in a few weeks you know that's that's big that's big that's uh it takes takes lots of guts you know it teaches us to have to have guts to work hard you know and achieve achieve our goals so she's flying over to she's flying over Asia. uh she's flying over to Mississippi in America I was in USA there. sorry I thought it was in Asia yeah okay cool no 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 yeah 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 USA okay